Mirko Beljanski grew up in Turia in northern Serbia. Coming from a poor family, he was destined to take over his father's workshop and become a mechanic. Mon père était un mécanicien et en même temps un paysan qui adorait son son travail, qui euh, réparait toutes les machines agricoles. Tout ce qui l'intéressait, c'est d'avoir un fils qui, qui va lui succéder, c'est-à-dire faire la même chose que lui. This was not the life Mirko wanted, so he sought to flee at all costs. To make matters even more difficult, the world was on the threshold of World War II, but Mirko would not be derailed from following his passion. He was a brilliant student, and with his degree in his pocket, he applied for a scholarship to pursue higher education. Since Yugoslavia did not have a university specializing in biology, the country's best students were offered two opportunities. The rich were sent to Moscow and the poor to Paris. Mirko took the train to France and arrived in Paris. At the time, Mirko spoke poor French, as he shared a room with Yugoslavian friends. Being admitted to the Sorbonne, he studied biochemistry, organic chemistry, physiology, and biology. He was already stimulated by many unanswered questions. He turned directly to research. After his thesis in 1951, he joined the Pasteur Institute, where he wrote his first scientific publication with Professor Matchbeuf, devoted to bacteria. During his studies, Mirko met his future wife, Monique Beljanski, a research engineer. They worked together, and she remained by his side, emotionally and professionally, throughout his life. Despite facing pushback from the hierarchy, Mirko Beljanski continued to pursue his vision. When I came to Paris, Jacques Monod said, I would like to now that you change the subject and that you work on the genetic of ADN. Je lui ai dit que j'acceptais à une seule condition, que mon approche à ce problème euh, soit acceptée, c'est-à-dire que je sois libre, totalement libre, pour développer euh, ces recherches sur l'ADN. Mirko Bojanski did not hesitate to question Jacques Monod's theories. Mirko's research led him to develop molecules capable of attacking cancer cells without affecting healthy cells. This selectivity of action will mark all his work. Ça n'a pas plu à Jacques Monod qui me demandait de ne pas publier ses résultats, de les garder dans mon tiroir, mais je lui ai répondu, écoutez, ce sont des résultats dont je suis sûr, je suis payé par le CNRS, je les publie euh, et je suis passé outre avec le professeur Lépine qui a d'ailleurs accepté de m'aider de ce côté-là pour le publier euh, à l'Académie des sciences. Quand j'ai eu déjà ces, ces molécules, Je me suis adressé, j'ai dit à Monique, écoute, on va s'adresser à l'Institut Pasteur, au directeur de l'Institut Pasteur, qui est Jacques Monod, et je lui ai écrit une lettre en disant, et je vous demande de me donner les conditions de travail plus décentes, plus de moyens, que je puisse aller beaucoup plus vite euh, euh, pour développer ces recherches. Et la réponse est arrivée assez, assez cinglante, si j'ose dire, en disant que... Euh, le programme de recherche que je propose à l'Institut Pasteur n'entre pas dans la recherche appliquée de l'Institut Pasteur. Je me souviens d'une réflexion étrange de Jacques Monod me disant un jour « Mirko fait du bon travail ». Je lui ai dit à ce moment-là « Votre attitude est encore plus scandaleuse ». Il m'a répondu avec un petit sourire en moqueur « Ma chère, on ne fait pas toujours ce qu'on devrait faire ». La pression était telle qu'à un moment donné, même il y a eu des, des, des émissaires, si vous voulez, de la part de probablement Monod qui me disait, cet émissaire me disait « Ne travaille pas sur l'ADN. Si tu travailles sur l'ADN, tu n'auras rien du tout du CNRS ». The pressure was mounting, and due to budget cuts and lack of resources, he left the Pasteur Institute for the Faculty of Pharmacodynamics in chatenay malabry There, he had access to a laboratory and could confirm the effectiveness of his products, as well as their absence of toxicity. Mirko Bojanski retired, but did not retire from his research. An association composed of cancer and AIDS patients was created to allow Mirko Bojanski to continue his research in a private laboratory, which offered him the research equipment and the freedom he had dreamed of his entire life. Beljanski produced multiple publications. He was invited to participate in numerous scientific congresses around the world. The information spread. General practitioners started to use the Beljanski product. President of France, François Mitterrand himself, suffering from prostate cancer, benefited from him, and against all odds, was able to finish his final term. 
After the death of the president, a new administration came to power. A collusion between pharmaceutical lobbyists, politicians, and the Pasteur Institute led to the attack on October 9, 1996. On that day, 80 undercover soldiers came to invade the laboratories and destroyed everything. The French government arrested Mirko Boltinsky and threw him in jail for promoting products without the government's authorization. Ils m'ont mis les menottes, ils m'ont amené euh, à la juge, juge d'instruction à Créteil, où elle aurait dû me recevoir à 10h du matin, elle m'a reçu à 5h de l'après-midi. C'était fait exprès pour mettre dans une cellule, pour voir comment se présente la cellule, j'imagine. Bon, là, il y a eu la, la prise des, des empreintes digitales, photos, comme on est ici, on était vraiment des criminels. Hein. Thousands of people demonstrated, but no hearing date was set by the judge. It was impossible for Beljansky to defend himself. Two years passed, still no hearing date. Still unable to continue his research, to publish, to participate in conferences, or even to speak to journalists. Stressed and exasperated, Beljansky decided to go before the European Court of Human Rights. But he was then in his own battle with cancer. During this time, Beljansky was deprived of his own extracts as they were all destroyed during the raid of his laboratory. At the time, Sylvie Beljansky took her father's case before the European Court in the name of Monique Beljansky. In 2002, the European Court rendered a unanimous decision condemning France. With the unwavering support of grateful patients, the Beljansky Foundation was created in the United States in 1999 to continue research. The extracts were reproduced thanks to the professor's notes, publications, and the expertise of his wife, Monique who accompanied him during all the years of his research. Less than 30 years later, Maison Beljansky, the US-based company that markets the products developed by Beljansky, received the Gotham Green Award for its commitment to producing high quality supplements that meet sustainable development goals. Thanks to the help of several prestigious American universities, numerous scientific publications have been able to confirm the discoveries and effectiveness of the extracts. A man who sought freedom since childhood, who was destined to become a mechanic in a small village in Serbia, and who, through his hard work, the originality of his vision, the support of his wife and thousands of patients, was able to open new frontiers in integrative medicine. In honor of the 100-year anniversary of his birth, we pay tribute to Dr. Beljansky. His discoveries still inspire young researchers who find new applications every year.